A wise man once said, a person is smart. People are dumb, panicky, dangerous animals, and you know it. This maxim, also known as Kay's Law, seems right when you think about the idea of mob mentality and mass hysteria and stampedes, all of which I have talked about in the recent past. But is it right? Uh, I mean, if you've seen those past videos, you may have an idea where I'm going here, but I'm going to go on regardless. I'm thinking about this due to a recent episode of Joe Rogan's podcast. Obviously, I subscribe and listen to every show as soon as it debuts because I'm such a huge fan. And okay, now I saw it on social media like everyone else with two brain cells to rub together. On New Year's Eve, Rogan hosted Dr. Robert Malone, a quack who has previously made the anti-vaxxer rounds for suggesting that people should not get the COVID-19 vaccine, going so far as to tell Steve Bannon on his podcast, yes, this is the darkest timeline, so of course Steve Bannon has a podcast, last summer that the vaccines would actually make the pandemic worse. Malone then hit the quack jackpot, the quack pot, if you will, when he was booked on Rogan's show, where he told Rogan's audience of millions of gullible people that a third of the population has been hypnotized into believing scientists studying the pandemic in an act he called mass formation psychosis, which is also, according to him, how the Nazis came to power in Germany, which is ironic. Malone didn't get in on this pseudoscientific death cult circuit because he's a quack doctor, uh, but also specifically because he claims that he invented mRNA vaccines. And he kind of did. I mean, in the same way that about 400 other scientists can claim to have invented mRNA vaccines because it's no longer the year 1928 when one random dude can make a life-saving medical discovery by leaving a loaf of bread out on the counter too long. And yes, I know it was actually a Petri dish full of Staphylococcus aureus and not a loaf of bread, but loaf of bread is objectively funnier than Staphylococcus aureus and it's easier for me to say, so that's what I went with. But I'm including this correction because a few months ago I made a joke about how gas is made from dinosaurs and I got a bunch of angry messages about how technically gas does not come from dinosaurs, it comes from ancient oceanic plants, which yes, that is true. And yes, this is a science channel that's dedicated to correcting misinformation, but gas is made of dinosaurs is funnier, God damn it. <sighs> Sorry, what was I talking about? Oh yeah. Dr. Robert Malone. So back in the 1980s, he did some important experiments uh, demonstrating that you can surround strands of mRNA with fat and then expose them to cells, which will then absorb the mRNA and start producing proteins. It's a very important step, but it's just one step on the great staircase that led us to mRNA COVID-19 vaccines in 2020. It wasn't the first step, it wasn't the last step, but it was important. So why did Dr. Malone, who performed an important experiment showing that mRNA could be used as a therapeutic medical tool, who is a real doctor and who has consulted on vaccines for various pharmaceutical companies, uh, get on the anti-mRNA vaccine speaking circuit? Well, The Atlantic published a highly revealing biography of Dr. Malone last summer in which they point out some key facts, like how he describes his lack of fame resulting from his discovery as intellectual rape. Yeah, he said that. I'm no psychologist, um, but his growing anger and resentment over the years sounds absolutely exactly like a villain origin story, like a super villain origin story. So at first he was upset that the Salk Institute where he performed that mRNA experiment and uh, Vical, which is the pharmaceutical company he dropped out of Salk to work for, profited from his work and essentially prevented him from further pursuing his research, which the Salk Institute denies having any evidence of. Then the pandemic happened, and in February of 2020, he actually contracted COVID-19. He recovered, but he was left with long COVID symptoms like lingering cough and fatigue and hypertension. When the vaccines debuted, he got the Moderna shot, hoping that it would improve his symptoms, but he says it actually only made them worse. 
And then you have the fact that despite the collaborative process of vaccine creation, a few scientists have achieved some level of fame, like uh, Catalin Carrico, the biochemist who helped make mRNA vaccines less inflammatory, aka another important step on the staircase to where we are now. Carrico has been careful to stress her relatively small role in the decades of research that went into the vaccines, but Malone was furious to see her get the attention he clearly thinks that he deserves. According to Carrico, Malone sent her an email claiming that he was her mentor and coach, despite the fact they had only met one time when he invited her to give a talk in 1997. And apparently he told her in an email, this is not going to end well. That's, that's, a, that's a villain origin story right there. Like, it, it hits all the buttons. Overinflated sense of accomplishment, check. Misplaced sense of being unappreciated, check. Vaguely threatening message to a successful woman he views as some sort of nemesis when she barely thinks of him at all, check. So now he's made his final villain choice. <laughs> Instead of just holding up on his 50 acre horse farm with his loving wife and patiently waiting to be included in a Nobel prize, he has found his long sought after fame on the quack circuit, where brainless dolts like Joe Rogan unquestioningly refer to him as the sole inventor of the mRNA vaccine and they hang on to every word he says. And now he has dropped the term mass formation psychosis to describe the behavior of billions of people who would like to get vaccinated and end the pandemic. After all, if he invented mRNA vaccines, why can't he also be a sociologist? The Joe Rogans of the world certainly aren't going to stop him. Mass formation psychosis doesn't seem to have ever been a thing that existed prior to last year when it was coined by Matthias Desmet, a professor of clinical psychology at Belgium's Ghent University. And from what I can tell, um, also a grade A wackaloon trying to weasel into the conspiracy theory pro-COVID circuit as suggested by interviews he's done with third tier dipshit YouTubers as late as last November, continuing to argue that COVID-19 isn't as dangerous as everybody thinks it is. I'm honestly stunned that anyone is stupid enough to continue that line of reasoning. <laughs> you know, it's equivalent to the conservatives who are still arguing that climate change isn't real at all, as opposed to those conservatives who have realized that's so obviously stupid they can't get away with it anymore. So they've upgraded to, well, we can't trust the scientists who say climate change is really bad for us. If you want to know more about the updating of conservative anti-global warming rhetoric, uh, check out this video I made uh, just a few months ago. So Desmet coined mass formation psychosis sometime last year, and Malone picked it up and made it famous on Rogan's show. But it's essentially no different from the idea of mob mentality, the idea that in a crowd, people effectively lose their sense of individuality and they just blindly go along with whatever the rest of the crowd is doing or whatever the leaders of the crowd want them to do. You probably can already guess that I think this is bullshit, but it is based on real science. You know, after all, the, the most successful bits of misinformation have a little bit of truth to them to really help them take off. My apologies, but at this point, I am just going to summarize some previous videos that I made on topics that relate to this. So back in September, I talked about mass sociogenic or psychogenic illness, previously known as mass hysteria. Uh, related to a study that suggested teenagers are experiencing this in regards to the adoption of traits associated with Tourette's, which they catch more or less by watching influencers on TikTok and other social media outlets. While some sociologists disagreed with that study and a bit of internal squabbling, the idea of mass sociogenic illnesses being real is not in dispute people really can pass along mental disorders and strange behaviors, especially when the conditions for it are right. Previous research suggests that those conditions are usually like extremely stressful conditions on a societal level. 
For instance, during the medieval ages, when it seems like there was a new sociogenic plague every week or so. Like, you gotta survive somehow. It's worth noting, though, that there is absolutely no evidence that at any time in history did a mass sociogenic illness result in the majority of a population listening to scientists and taking precautionary measures against a deadly disease. Uh, mass sociogenic illnesses tend to be a limited portion of the population behaving in a really unusual way, like laughing a lot or dancing without stopping for long periods of time, not thinking critically and trying to protect the most vulnerable members of their society. That's, that's not a thing, unfortunately. Also, way back in 2018, I talked about the idea of mob mentality, specifically as it related to Darren Brown. That's right, I bet you didn't think this video was going to include a reference to a famous magician, but it's relevant. Malone and Desmond before him explicitly describe mass formation psychosis as a mob of people being hypnotized by leaders. So first of all, hypnosis doesn't really work the way the general public tends to think of it. A hypnotist can't force you to do something that you don't want to do. And he can only make very suggestible people or people who are very hungry for attention do things that they are already willing to do. As an example, I worked my way through college as a magician and I worked in a magic shop. And we had a resident hypnotist who occasionally helped out when we didn't have coverage. He would constantly do shit like, you know, he'd just be walking past me and he would take my hands in his and he would look deeply into my eyes and invite me over to his apartment that night. And I would say, ew, no, go away, because he was gross and weird. He had no magical power over me because I truly did not want to sleep with him. <laughs> uh, but he was pretty successful on the college circuit doing his hypnosis act. I mean, I don't know how successful he was with the ladies. I, I don't want to know. I assume he's a pickup artist now. Anyway, that brings me to Darren Brown. Uh, a few years ago, Darren Brown produced a special where he supposedly showed the madness of crowds by hosting a supposed reality show in which a live studio audience, all of whom wore masks in order to remain anonymous, could watch a supposedly unsuspecting man go about his day and they could vote on whether or not to fuck with him. So for instance, they could decide whether he would go home for a quiet evening with friends or be falsely arrested for shoplifting. The anonymous audience members always chose to fuck with him in evil ways. Therefore, Darren Brown wanted us to believe being in a mob as an anonymous person removes a per person's individuality and their capability of making moral decisions. No, that's not what happened. Um, two psychologists at the time rebutted this uh, ersatz experiment by pointing out that it was based on a completely debunked sociological concept that was easily 30, now 40 years out of date. In fact, they wrote, the past several decades of research has shown that rather than a loss of identity within crowds, there is a shift from personal to social levels of identification. Instead of acting in terms of the norms and behavioral limits of one's personal identity, within a psychological crowd, one therefore acts in coherence with the norms of one's salient collective identity. These norms will differ depending upon which social identity is salient at any given time, e.g. as a resident of a local community, supporter of a sports team, or as a member of an audience at a television recording. Crowd behavior is therefore rooted in social context, such that individuals may even act more pro-socially in a crowd than they would do alone. See, e.g., the nonviolent resistance of Indian crowds in the face of colonial British rule or within crowd helping during emergencies. So here's the little kernel of truth in the idea of people getting vaccinated due to mass formation psychosis. While it is in no way psychosis in the way that we think of mass sociogenic illness, there is evidence to suggest that in a society that values science and the greater good, a society that cares about the elderly and newborns and the disabled, 
people may be more likely to step into that role of also caring about those things and taking positive action to make the world a better place when they feel like they are part of that crowd, that a psychological mob. So it's possible that if you control for a culture's access to vaccines and ability to deliver them to the general public, you might find that societies that place a higher value on collectivism and pro-social behavior do a better job at getting vaccinated. New Zealand, for instance, has vaccinated 95% of their eligible population with at least one dose. Here in the United States, where we have basically an unlimited ability to procure vaccines and get them into arms, only 74% of our eligible population has at least one dose. Is it possible that this difference is due to one society valuing science and the greater good, while the other society values individualism at all costs? Possibly. For more on that one, check out this video from July of 2020, where I discuss how individualist societies dealt with the pandemic differently than collectivist societies. So, are you influenced by the society around you? Of course you are. Culture is the ocean the fish swim in. They don't see it, but it's all around them and it affects everything they do in both big and small ways. Are people getting vaccinated and wearing masks because they're the hypnotized victims of mass formation psychosis? No. Hypnotists are creepy weirdos and respectable people do not listen to them. Listening to scientists and taking care of the most vulnerable people in our society is just what we call being a good human.